I'm not monitoring anything anyway. I should tell you that. Oh. Hi, everybody. This is Alex from the Astroimaging Channel. If I looked a little old and haggard today, well, it's probably because I'm old and haggardly. But more importantly, I just got back from like Wednesday to just like 10 minutes ago at um, our TMC Astronomy Expo where I spent the night taking pictures and the day listening to lectures and even giving some lectures today. So I'm a little goofy. Luckily, we've got a good show planned for you. Um, unfortunately, uh, our, our Greg Krinklov, who is going to be here and discuss some stuff for, that he does, is not going to be able to be here tonight. We'll have to reschedule him for some other time. But uh, we've got, um, we're very lucky. Next week, we're going to have Rachel Freed here. And Rachel's going to tell us some stuff and uh, about, well, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you what. I'm going to let her tell you whatever it is she's going to tell you about. She's going to take a few minutes to preview what she's going to do next week. To get you all excited about being back here. Oh, Rachel. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for letting me have this little intro to next week. Um, so I will be talking about the mainly student astronomical research programs that I'm involved with. Um, I help set up student astronomy research programs around the country, the United States, as well as around the world now. Um, we have students doing, um, collecting their own data using mainly remote telescopes and learning how to write for scientific publication. So students from eighth grade through high school, through college, um, they, we have this seminar we run, they learn how to write, how to communicate science in addition to collecting data, analyzing data. We do um, double star astrometry, which is fun because it's simple and it's a great intro into astronomical research, but we also are doing exoplanet transit, light curves and variable stars. And pretty soon we're going to get into um, other things, spectro spectroscopy and speckle interferometry for closed binaries and um, asteroid light curves. So I'll be talking a little bit about that and the conferences that I get to go to. Uh, I actually might look a little old and haggard because I'm old and haggard too. Or no, because I was just at the International Astronomical Union's first um, biennial conference on astronomy education in Germany. A couple days ago, uh, where we got, I got to talk to everyone about that. Um, so it's there's really this sort of global coming together to talk about astronomical literacy for the whole world and how to get students involved in studying astronomy. Um, and I do a lot of outreach, and I'll talk about that too. And so many fun things I could talk about. That's what it's going to be next week. Yay, thank you very much. Okay, and um, uh, Rachel's got that enthusiasm for what she does, so I hope you guys are back here next week joining us, asking her lots of good questions and stuff like that. I should tell you that as much as I like uh, taking pretty pictures, um, I also like doing some of that other stuff, and and uh, at RTMC this weekend, the uh, International Local Time Occultation Timing Association had their uh, had a big meeting, and so I, I caught a little bit of that, and I participated in occultation timings, and then that's really fun because you yeah. have to go out to a weird place and stand 50 yards away from somebody else and take <laughs> pictures of the moon or a, a star and watch what happens, and then you tell somebody about it, and luckily they're smarter than you are, and they take care of it, and they figure out exactly what shape that asteroid was or what size the limb of the moon was, or I, and it's all that cool stuff. And you get there and you go, whoa, hey, I'm pretty cool. I'm a scientist now. <laughs> um, and one of my friends, as a matter of fact, I got an email from um, uh, University of New Mexico, I think. Uh, one of my friends has gotten me into this thing where for um, I, on the top of my house sometime in the next week and a half, I will have a meteor cam and it will watch for all the meteors that zip around. And mm -hmm. we also have the same kind of camera up at uh, Goat Mountain, which GMAR is, is our observing site, and it's about 70 miles away. And then one of my buddies, the guy who got me into this, um, uh, has one of these at his home, which is also about 70 miles from both me and GMARS. And you're right, that makes a triangle. And with the triangle, you can triangulate. So they're going to look at the pictures I send them, which is all done by Raspberry Pi. I don't actually have to do anything. Uh, but it, it goes through my internet and off, in, off into the 
to La La Land, where we're actually New Mexico or something, <laughs> and they coordinate it. And and I'm going to be a scientist, just like that. Yay! Okay. Yay for me. Okay, <laughs> on with tonight's show. Um, uh, we are lucky enough to have somebody with us, uh, uh, Tolga, and Tolga is going to open up something. Tolga, where are you? You're not showing down at the bottom of the screen. Are you ready to go, Tolga? There, yeah. I'm coming back. I'm, now, you I'm here. Focus. I'm, I'm oh. here. I was just waiting for you to uh, well, finish what you, what you're talking about. Well, yeah, I'm going to be. Go ahead. You're on. I'm going to be doing a uh, couple of uh, unboxing. Uh, basically, it's like an unboxing video. I'm going to talk about three products. Um, one is a, a Rainbow Astro RST 135. It's a small little mount. It's uh, perfect for portable use. So we're going to be opening that. And next one is going to be a uh, Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box. This is for uh, di power distribution. You put this device on top of your mount and uh, it helps you with your USB cables, power distribution. And the last one we're going to be uh, looking at is the the new Optec Sagita off-axis guider. It's basically a large off-axis guider, which has pretty cool features. So when we open them up and we'll take a look at each. And um, uh, so let's, we'll start. I'm gonna switch my camera around. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, like that. Okay, now so, we'll look at your floor or something, or box. Yeah, that's my. Nice. I'm just bringing the box yeah. over. Here, Here's the, this is the uh, rainbow astro mount, and this is it. I mean, you see it's a, you see the size of my hand next to it. Uh, it comes with, uh, what I like is they put these little fun stickers on them. They're pretty awesome. I mean, you know, a little touch. This is cool. It comes with a little uh, soft case. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. I got to figure out a way to put this somewhere. <laughs> So this is this is the whole entire mount. Here's my hand next to it. It's basically size of a uh, 16 ounce soft drink. Uh, it could be used in alt uh, alt as mode, just the way it is. Uh, it can also be used in equatorial mode. Basically, th this axis, you know, turns this way. And it becomes an equatorial mount. It has a built-in pole master connection. It has a built-in pole master adapter. So if you have a pole master, basically that's how you uh, polar align this thing. It doesn't have any other way to do polar aligning. So you use a pole master with it. Um, and another thing I found out, which I didn't know until last week, QHY has a Android app for the pole master. So if you get the right cable, which is a mini USB to mini USB-C connector, like the mini USB to basically your Android phone, Palm Master has an app where you don't need a computer. You could use the Palm Master app to do, do your polar alignment. Um, it has a, a hand controller. Uh, it does not come with a saddle, so the, you that's you would have to buy extra. You you could either get a Vixen saddle or a Lost Man saddle, depends on your telescope. It has a homing function where in the with the hand controller, if you press zero and hold it, it goes to this position the way you see it. Uh, but it is a perfect portable mount. So it carries the weight capacity is unbelievably thirty pounds. Uh, for something this small to carry 30 pounds is 
incredible. Um, the one uh, pe thing people complain about it is that, and, and another thing I should mention that this is a weightless mount. There is, so if you put it, when you put it on equatorial mode, it's completely out of balance. Deck, deck, especially the RA, because normally on an RA, you have a telescope on this side and counterweights on this side, and you balance it. There is no way to balance this mount. It's constantly engaged. So one downfall of that is when you turn the power off, and if it's a little bit off, it's not perfectly at the counterweight down position, you know, uh, it, it will start to turn. Uh, so, you know, you just don't kill the power to it. It's not meant to be remote. It's meant to be field use. You know, it's meant to be, you, you could put this and your small telescope, something like a 80 millimeter to 100 millimeter refractor with your CCD camera, you can put them all into a backpack and bring it into the airplane with you. That's the idea about this. And there is a, it doesn't come also, it also doesn't come with a tripod. So, and there's a tripod that I use with it. It's a, um, it's called RT90C, you buy on Amazon for $300. And, and that's also about when it collapses to 20 inches, that also fits into your backpack. So you have your entire imaging system in your backpack. It's, I don't think there is anything, there is no other product that comparable to this. It, it, it's a little bit expensive. Oh, it's on the expensive side. It's actually, you know, almost $4,000. So it's on the pretty expensive side, but it doesn't have anything you can compare it to. You know, you couldn't compare it to the astrophysics and the paramounts and, or on the, the sky watchers. You can't compare it to the Skywatch because of the weight capacity and uh, other factors. And you can't compare it to the Paramounts and the astrophysics because of the size. So it's kind of on its own. You know, those uh, Skywatchers, yes, they're very small, but they, they have probably one-tenth the weight capacity. So it comes with a uh, USB cable. Uh, this is the hand controller cable. But if the hand controller cable breaks down, it's just an RJ45, so it could, it could be bought anywhere. Uh, th this is the 3 ace tripod adapter. You, this goes on the bottom of the mount, and then it just goes onto your regular photographic tripod. This is the wrench that uh, lets you put in the equatorial mode. It comes with that. Uh, this is the pole master adapter. That it comes with. You, this bolts onto onto the back of your pole master, and this uh, goes on to that, uh, just like that. Uh, also, it does also it also it does not come with a power uh, source. It comes with a power cable, but not power supply. So you have to uh, provide your own or run it off a battery. And this is the hand controller. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not the, I don't think it's the best, but, you know, it's, again, the van of this thing is, is the portability. Uh, I really, I don't know about everybody else, but I really don't care about how many objects are in the database of a hand controller. That's not something I'm concerned about. Uh, so this is all, this is all I have about this one. Is there any questions about this? Are there any questions about this, this one? Sorry, um, I forgot to turn my mic back on. Um, I'm looking at Rumble Talk, and there's nothing uh, on Rumble Talk, and I can flip over to uh, to the others. And there's a whole lot of people saying hi to each other and stuff like that. And Jay Polanco noted that it's three thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. That's um, how does that compare with my iOpton Sky Tracker? I think it's like thirty. Yeah, I mean those those are probably in the hundreds of dollars. Yeah, versus the thousands of dollars. But I wouldn't think, I don't think that that one is as small or you know have the same capacity. No, I I, I was I was joking, um, and um, 
the other question that I would have is, um, you know, if you're if we're passing this off as a as a, a some kind of imaging mount, which is what I assume we're doing here on the S2 Imaging Channel, we must uh, have some belief that we can obviously uh, feed an auto guider to it. Can we yes. put an auto guider to it? And what's its native periodic error, or you know, corrected with reasonable PEC? Oh, okay. So, yeah, that, that is an excellent question. So, it does have, uh, I'll go back, switch the camera around. Uh, it does have a t traditional guide port, but mm -hmm. it also has a ASCOM driver. You know, you, yeah. you could drive it either with ASCOM or with a guide cable. Um, the periodic error is... It's, it's not advertised to be an unguided mount. It's a guided, you know, you're supposed to be guiding this mount. So the, the periodic error is not specified or advertised. So I'm assuming it's, you know, it's, it's not meant to be an unguided mount. Okay. Um, so it's probably up there with the, uh, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30. Uh, I don't know that, but that's what I'm assuming since they're not saying it. They, do they advertise this? They advertise this as a travel mount, right? Travel. They, they, this is the most uh, important feature about this mount. It's not the how, you know what it does and how. It's the size of it. It's how little it is and how much it carries compared to how little it is. Right. It, it's it's it, it, a travel mount. I for those of well, most of you don't know this. The people who were there today know this, but. Um, uh, I just got back from RTMC, and at RTMC, we did a workshop on um, uh, taking images when you're away from home. And uh, so we we spent four hours plus a little bit, you know, about target selection and everything else. And this little bugger was, you know, caught a little bit of the slides there, and everybody thought it was pretty impressive, especially the fact that you can carry it around without adding weights to it. You see, you, you save all that weight carrying, and that's just a tremendous advantage um, if you're if you're carrying your own mount around. And if it can be corrected uh, with, you know, like if you could load up something like a, a PhD, and uh, you can connect it with ASCOM, you load up your your backyard um, EOS or something like that, and put your DSLR on a on a decent 85 millimeter refractor or something, you'd have a, a, a and you. You, you pull or line to you'd have a, a, a very competitive mount that would probably do anything that any other travel mount could do. And uh, let's see, I I thought when I was at Neef it was 35 pounds. Is it 30 pounds that it can hold? Tolga? Um, it, it could be, you know, just, I mean, I'm, I'm talking I, out off of mem okay. memory. I mean, these things could be looked up, you know, you shouldn't be taking my word for it, what they are. You know th th that that number is advertised, so you could go to the manufacturer's website and look it up to see what the actual capacity is. But you know, like I feel that thirty pounds. I mean, I don't care what they say. I feel that thirty pounds is about the max for this mount for imaging. For visual, I actually I have one of these mounts for myself, and I actually put a Astrophysics one forty telescope on this. Show off. Uh, um, do you on, tell me on alt as mode just to see if it can handle it. So it handles it, but I'm you, you couldn't image with that, you know, it's, just, it's not stable at that point. Can you add weights to it? Can you add a yes, counterpart? You can. Yes, you can, but just to just to be clear, the weights is not when you add weights to it, it's not to balance it, it's base, it's it's so that it doesn't tip over basically. So if you put over 30 pounds to it tripod will tip over. The motors are strong enough to carry a lot more than that. Uh, but the, you put uh, there's optional weights to it if you're going to put a lot of uh, telescope on it okay. so that the tripod tip doesn't tip over. That's basically what the weights are for. Okay. Uh, Jay Blanco points out that it's uh, 40 pounds on website. I'm not sure which answer, which question he's answering on there. Um, George Lutch says 30 pounds without counterweight and 40 pounds with counterweight. So, uh, but at any rate, uh, for those of you who've got uh, 4,000 bucks to spend on a travel mount, uh, you know, it is a great idea when you're traveling, taking an eclipse picture, or you want to get some serious work done. Um, 
while while you were you know away from home, it would be a great mount to have around. I don't see anything else in either of the conversation lines, so let's go with where else we're going. Okay, Tolga. Okay. All right. So next, we're going to be talking about. Um, I switched the camera. Can you guys see? Yep. Okay. So next, we're going to be talking about. It's called the uh, Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box, and this is a very good solution for power distribution on your imaging rig. So this thing is uh, is a basically a. It, it has USB 3 hub built into it. It has two, four, uh, four USB 3 and two USB 2 uh, hubs built into it. It has 12 volt. You can control up to four 12 volt devices. Uh, you supply 12 volt to it. This is the power in. And it can run for, and then in the, in the software, you can turn these things, uh, the outputs on and off. So you can turn your camera on, your mount on, your do uh, your focuser if, if it needs power. You can control the power from your software. It also runs three dew heaters, which actually you could use one of them to run your. If you have fans on your uh, telescope, you can plug your fan to it, and then adjust the fan speed. Uh, it also comes with a what they called an environmental sensor, which is basically a temperature and humidity sensor uh, it plugs into. Uh, oh, it also can run a focus motor. So it's, let's see, it's a power distribution. USB distribution, dew heater, uh, dew controller, and focus controller all in one box. And there's an optional bracket that you could buy for it. And then you could put it on your loss man, like you can have a secondary loss man plate on your telescope, put this on, bring two wires to it, a USB in and power in, and practically solve your power problem. I use this myself and I love this. It's a great product. But it comes and it comes with every cable. Here's it comes with a uh, every you know four. It has power four power outputs. It comes with four, you know, five and a half millimeter to five five and a half millimeter jacks. Uh, it comes with its USB in cable, the USB three cable that you run to your computer. Also comes with a cigarette lighter type of a uh, plug, which actually I cut that one off and put a, um, what do you call those power poles? Anderson um, power poles. And Anderson power poles. It comes with that. And op like I said, and optionally, you can get a focus cable and run your uh, unipolar po uh, focus motors, such as robo focus, um, any kind of unipolar motor. Um, I can't think of all of them at this right now. In fact, Pegasus Astro make their own focus motors as well. Uh, but any any unipolar uh, focus motor. They did say that it would run a bipolar focus motor, but then we tried to hook it up to a Optech bipolar motor, and it doesn't run very well because bipolar uh, Optech motors require five volts, and this thing runs on twelve, and it wasn't very happy. Okay. Uh, what's so, the size and uh, weight of it? Um, it's about uh, four inches by four by five, and it weighs ten, eight to ten ounces. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm. These are. I'm just. You know. I'm not reading specs. I'm just going off of feel. The whole idea of the show is you're opening a box and finding out what you're finding out about it. And uh, right. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not. This is. I'm not trying to. You know, 
I'm not doing like an advertisement for the thing. I'm just like a box opening special kind of thing. Okay. So. Um, let's see. How much does one of those suckers cost? Uh, I believe they cost six hundred dollars. Okay. But like I said, you have to think. I think they're pretty cheap, and I'll tell you why. Because you you know think of, if you have to buy a power pole and there's some power pole distribution block, a USB hub, a do controller, a a uh, what else? A uh, phone charger. Does, uh, you know, USB three hub, USB two hub, adjustable twelve volt output. If oh focus controller, I forgot. Uh, that's the part that I was forgetting. A focus controller, do controller, and twelve volt switchable powers. I mean, that's another important thing. You get to switch these outputs. You know, if you need to recycle the power to your camera, you just go to your software that comes with this. You click on it, and you just turn it off and turn it back on. And if your camera was frozen, you could just bring it back to life instead of going out there and unplugging and plugging it back in. How many amps does it handle? Uh, I think it handles 20. 20 amps. Okay. My uh, SX35 camera says that I should have a separate power supply to it because it likes having a separate power supply. Mm -hmm. what, does that, what does that mean for this box? Um I, I use I use it with different uh, cameras, and I haven't had a problem. But I'm not going to go against the manufacturer and say, "Oh, you know, if your manufacturer says you have to use your own power supply, uh, you should." But what do you do in the field when if you have to run the camera off a battery? Uh, I don't know. I, I I do have that problem. That's something I have to consider. But um, uh, but I'm not going to go on you know on record saying that. Oh, don't listen to the manufacturer, and this will. I'll no, say I, I'll I do it. Well, I actually have do it had on your problems. own risk. I actually have had problems when I've tried to run the whole system on a, a very big um, um, high amperage power supply, and uh, when I split them back out, they 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 went right back to being fine again. And these were 110 to 12 volt direct 110 to 12 volt power supplies. You know, pyramid power supplies. So um, okay. Uh, let me go back. I want to um, uh, refresh on some other parts of an earlier, the earlier conversation the, with the with the funny mount there. Um, where are we? Welcome to, do, 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 do. George. I know it's comparable to anything, but you add another grand for for what you paid for that, and you, you have what he paid for his mighty with everything needed to mount my scope and image. I think the I, I think somebody. I think George is missing the point that, yeah, but you wouldn't be able to put it in your backpack along with your 85 millimeter scope and go take pictures with it. I, I think that's right. what you're missing. I mean, you know, without, you don't need counterweights with this. Again, you could put your telescope camera, tripod and the mount into a backpack and bring it in the airplane with you Yeah, as a yeah. carry-on. Uh, so um, I don't think anybody's offering this as a better astro imaging solution what they're advertising or what they're pushing is a better travel solution that can also take pictures that's exactly right yeah i mean i wouldn't get rid of my mighty and buy the you know this is, this would not be a replacement i i may i would may be able to do i'm not going to get rid of my mighty and buy this instead i might buy this as my travel mount or down you know you know, go to a smaller system and use this mount for both, but you can't replace a mighty with this or an astrophysics Mach one, you know, which yeah. you're not gonna and, replace. And um, there's another little side conversation going on about the nature of, you know, why is this so capable? It uses a different kind of drive than we're used to, right? Uh, what is it? Oh yeah, so I, I didn't talk about that actually, you know, because yeah, it uses, they, they use a harmonic mount, I mean, harmonic drive. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know too much about it. I, I just, I've seen videos of how it works. I mean, I didn't open up the mount to look at how it works. Um, but if you do a search on internet, you know, on YouTube and saying harmonic drive, and you'll, there are like three um, renderings of how this stuff works. You can watch how it works. It's supposed to take care of, it's supposed to have zero backlash. And 
it feels like it doesn't have any backlash. I mean, if you know, no, a normal mount, if you like a cheaper mount, if you hold the deck and turn it left and right, you'll feel you'll feel the gears click click left and right. On this one, you you don't. It's their gears are constantly engaged. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has benefits to it, and it also has negatives to it. Just like I said, if your telescope is, um, imagine, you know, this is your tripod, and here's your, your telescope is, you know, looking at Zenith like this, and you, you, and since it doesn't have counterweights on this side, you turn to kill the power to it, it starts drooping over. Uh, so you'll hit your tripod. So it is a portable mount it's not meant to be left alone uh you know this is not an all-in-one solution i'm not going to tell anybody oh get rid of ge your gear and this is your lifetime mount this is a travel mount okay um there there's some discussion about how this this um the power box that you're talking about has some problems but i haven't i both listening to you and trying to translate you know what the comments are um we might have to come back to them later i have to read through the comments well i'm, I'm not i don't want to get into you know trouble uh tech oh, support sure. and questions and things like that uh, for okay. things like that they should you know contact the manufacturer do your own research you know do do uh, ask your buddies if somebody bought it you know ask them how they like it i use it i i like it i mean i don't uh I, I haven't seen any problems, but you know. Uh, but that that is what happens. That's on just the one point, imaging. one data point. But that is what happens on the Astro Imaging channel. People get on the comments and they make comments about, "Hey, I'm having a problem with this and that." Oh, sure, and, sure, sure. I'm not saying. Yeah. <laughs> we encourage I'm not you saying to do exactly that. that. Of okay. course, of course. Okay. Well, you got any no, other? I'm, things? I'm saying I can't answer those questions. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, but you guys are welcome to talk about them. Sure, go for it. I just want to make some comments. Uh, um, did, did UPS deliver anything else to your house this week? You got anything else to show us, Tolga? Oh yeah, one more. Okay, go for it. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna look at one more product. This is the uh, is it marked on the other side? No, it's not. Yeah, you. Uh, this is the Optex Sagita off axis guider. I'll show the uh, little parts and pieces later. Uh, so this comes in two versions. Uh, one is the motorized version. This is the motorized version, or it comes manual. Uh, this is, it, it's, there's a helical focuser, and there's a motor, optional motor, that you could get for it. Uh, you could basically focus your guide camera remotely. And one might say, well, wait a minute, that's only done once. Why would I need a motor? Uh, you know, you, you focus your guide camera one time and why would you cha uh, change it? It is a good question and it's a very limited use. So first it makes it easier to uh, do it. So that's one, but that's not good enough to pay the extra, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for the motor. It doesn't justify it. What it does justify is when you have uh, non-parfocal filters. So typically when you have um, uh, parfocal filters, you, you change between L and HA, you don't have to change the focus that much. But in cases that you may have a one millimeter filter, that I'm talking about the thickness of glass, and then a three millimeter filter, Again, I'm talking about the thickness of the glass. There might be a big difference between the focus. And if you, if your guide camera is parfocal with one of them, when you change the focus, the other filter, the off-axis guider on the other filter will be completely out of focus. So there are uses to it, but that's not the main feature of it. The, so I just wanted to go talk about the motor part. Uh, the good features are the size of the prism. It has a half inch prism uh it has a another good feature about it is that the helical focuser and the camera holder as you can see is not thicker than the body of the off-axis guider in many off-axis guiders yes the body is you know they make the off-axis guiders very you know as little as 10 11 millimeters but then you'll have a 
uh, helical focuser on it. And uh, if you're using it with like uh, one of those pancake focuser, like an FLI Atlas or a Optic Gemini or Optic Leo or a filter wheel, like a center line filter wheel or another filter wheel, you can't get, you have to put in a spacer to push your off, uh, off axis guider off the filter wheel or your adapter so that the helical focuser fits. In this case, they're the same thing. So you can make your adapter as thin as possible, you know, one millimeter, and it clears the, um, your um, guide camera focuser. That, that's a pretty good feature. Uh, so when you order it without the, uh, the motor, this part right here, you won't get that. The, it, the motor comes off with these two screws. You cut, take that out, and this becomes the focuser. I, I don't know if you can see when I turn this. Probably not. This is the focuser right here. This is how you, and it's pretty. It's very smooth. Another good feature of it is the depth of the prism is adjustable up and down. There's a lock screw on the side right here. You loosen that. And then you stick a Allen key in this hole right here at the tip of my finger. And when you turn that, you adjust the depth of the prism. So if your prism is too far down and it casts a shadow on your sensor, you raise it up. Or if it's too far up and then you get in really, you're into the boogered up part of the stars, you, you can get it, bring it down to closer to your sensor and, uh, have better stars so that that's a pretty good feature and you could do it without taking the whole thing off you could do it you do it from the outside you could let's say if you had a big sensor and your prism is casting a shadow on the sensor just like that shadow right there so th that will cast a shadow on your sensor and then you will see that as a dark spot on your flats but with this you could take continuous flat frames and then with the Allen key from here, adjust it as you're watching your screen and move the prism just off your sensor, but not too far off, just enough that it doesn't cast a shadow. So to me, those are pretty, those are very good features. Um, and it has a three inch opening, so you could put as big, you know, it will support up to a 16803 and maybe bigger. Uh, these parts are for the motor. Uh, so this is for the optional motor. It comes with a motor controller. Uh, it runs on a Optic Focus Links controller. I'm not gonna open that, but it's just a regular Focus Links controller. Um, without the motor, it's actually a very good price. It's I think it's 495. Uh, for a three-inch off-axis guider for less than five hundred dollars, that's an uh, that's an excellent price. Cool. So, okay, um, they're they're having a healthy discussion about um, uh, how one of the one of the um, viewers doesn't have good luck with the power box, and he's thinking it may be some kind of USB communications and giving them some suggestions about that. But I don't see any comments directly about the product you're showing us or any questions about that. So thank you very much. Um, is there anything else out there that we need to talk about for tonight? Uh, this, is, this is all I have. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking, you said this is all I have, just as you were showing us a picture of a keyboard. I'm thinking, okay, let's hear about this keyboard. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think <laughs> no, that's- I, I, had to, I, I forget, I, had to, I have to switch the cameras around. Where can we find information Optic about that off-axis guider? Where, where Matt wants oh, to it's, know- Oh, it's made by Optech. It's called Sagita. Uh, so you can find out more information on Optech's website, if, or if you do a search for Optech Sagita, It'll come up on retailer's website. Um, like I said, without the motor, it's a pretty good deal. With the motor, it gets expensive, and it has, uh, you know, it has limited usages. Uh, some people just like like to have, you know, if you can you can automate something. They they want it. 
uh, but I, I'm not going to use the motor on mine. Okay. Um, I'm not sure Ray, Ray, Ray's astrophotography is asked, just typed in OAG question. I don't know if he's got a, a question about OAG. Let's, let's hold off there for a few while we're looking at it. I want to talk to everybody for a few minutes here. Um, I, uh, while at RTMC, of course, today, I talked to a few people, imagers, and, and uh, uh, asked them to join us on the show as um, uh, presenters and talked to them about it. And, and they, they seem pretty positive. They'll be coming in. I want to remind everybody that um, we're nothing really special here. I mean, we some of us uh, take good images. Some of us take some really great images. By, by some of us, I mean that those uh you, you, Terry and Eric and Molly and me and Tolga and um, Adam when he comes in and stuff like that. Um, the only thing we got going for us is that we're willing to talk to y'all about it. And we need more people who are willing to talk to y'all about it. Um, and we would we would really like it if, you, if you've got something you want to say. Every once in a while, some of you come along and says, hey, I'd like to tell people about my new observatory, or hey, I've got a technique that I'd like to share with some. Please do contact at the uh, astroimagingchannel.com. <clears throat> it's not at all hard to do this. Um, you basically are sitting there at your house. Uh, you connect with a Google um, Hangout, Hangouts, and um, it's basically just run your PowerPoint right there or show us your processing screen and talk to us about what you're doing. So I would encourage everybody to uh, become participants. Um, maybe I'm thinking about this because I've, I've just been at RTMC and I've been an RTMC volunteer for about like 25 years. And I've been to other star parties like Oregon and Texas and Winter Star Party. And I just so much appreciate all the people that make those things happen. But um, I, I've been struck ever since I was a Cub Scout by, you know, at the end of the meeting and it's time to put the chairs away and put the, fold the tables up and put them back where they belong and all that other stuff. And there are some people that really jump in and actually do something um, and, you know, they fold, fold the chairs up and put them away. And there are a lot of there, there are other people who just stand around and watch and just are amazed that the chairs get put away. That shouldn't be happening. I've always been so impressed with like Jim today uh, walked into the astro imaging workshop and I hadn't set it up yet. And uh, he says, hey, how can I help you? And he started moving chairs around and moving tables around. I said, hey, we need to, you know two over there, four over there. And, you know, that's it, great. And we need that kind of spirit going on the astro imaging channel. So uh, uh, please, now, I think Ray's finished up his question here. So let me go back to reading it. Um, What's the, what's the uh, back focus uh, going back to the um, uh, off-axis guider, Tolga? Uh, can you tell us about? Yeah, I, I believe the back focus is thirty-one point seven five, which is inch and a quarter. Thirty-one point seven five millimeters, or one and a quarter inches. Okay, and obviously it's two inch size, so it, it it's a it'll let the full light path come through on a uh, full frame. Two inch? It? No, it's actually three inch. Oh, a three inch. Okay, big sucker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you could use a full you could use it with a full frame camera. Okay. Um and it supports uh you know any type of uh eyepiece type guide camera like a Lodestar or S big STI or ZWO mini 174 mini or QHY's 5M type cameras. The, the ones that look like an inch and a quarter eyepiece. Okay. I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, I, I want to thank Tolga for stepping in in the absence of our scheduled presenter, and we'll have Greg uh, rescheduled for some time when he can be back because we do want to hear about his program. And uh, that's going to do it for tonight. And I want to say goodbye, and we will see you next week. And you heard Rachel. She's coming, and she's enthusiastic, and she's got stuff that can help make you a scientist. So please come back next week, okay? Thanks, Tolga. Take us out. Good night, everybody.